Hi, welcome to Have Roots, Will Travel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltari, and I am a genealogist and a passionate traveler. This past year, we've been exploring different um, Bejoir, each one in an episode, really kind of delving in and paying tribute to these amazing women, the King's Daughters, um, and how they really were the founding mothers to me of North America. Before we proceed, let me make sure uh, to get you to subscribe and also hit that um, notifications alert. Uh, I post videos quite a bit so uh, you can stay on top of it. Also, um, for those of you looking for past episodes, the easiest way is to go on um, Have Roots Will Travel, my website. And I have a link to each of the preceding videos and also kind of a list of what's coming up. So you might like to have a look at that. Um, and also, I also have a Facebook page. Check that out as well. And with that being said, let's get started. Regular viewers know that I produced a video called Mifi Joa, the program 2.0. Have a look at that to give you all the ins and outs of the program and give you some perspective of what these ladies, remarkable ladies, went through. So our Faye Joa for this episode is the sister of Marguerite um, de A, and we are now doing Marie de A. And we're going, she's number 102, and we're and she was a viewer request. I do not have her in my um, in my arsenal, if you will. And uh, we're going to explore Marie and her story, vastly different than her sisters. Marie is also from uh, Rouen, Normandy. She was born 1655. Her parents are unknown, as were Marguerite. Um, as we talked about, Rouen is a historical city on the River Seine. It played such a prominent role in both English and French histories from the 11th to the 15th century. It is here where Joan of Arc was uh, tried and burned at the stake. So there is no greater history than this place. Truly, truly amazing place. I just wish we could know more about Marie and Marguerite's beginnings. So for reasons I do not know, Marie, the younger sister, came um, before, she was about 13 years old, uh, and was sent on La Nouvelle France. Um, she arrived in Quebec City on July 3rd, 1668. My only thought is that her sister Marguerite was perhaps taking care of um, either one of their parents. Um, they only had enough money. She sent her early, her younger sister off. You know, there's all kinds of ideas of why this would have happened. But she was very, very young. And, and not among the youngest, but certainly, um, you know, 13 years old. I remember seeing one that was 11 or 12. So uh, she's definitely um, in, in that very, very select group that got sent very early on. The groom that she selects or selects her, I mean, we know even less about him. I just put a map of France. His name was Adrien Détourné de la Violette. He was born about 1643. So that's kind of what we know about him. Isn't that amazing? Do know that Adrien uh, came to New France and was in Quebec City as of 1664, when he's confirmed to be there. So we know he's there and she arrives in 1668. Let's see what happens. So sometime before 1669, they were married at Sahel. This is all we know. Um, and she would have been about 14 or 15 years of age at this, which is just amazing, amazing. So they would settle in Le Pantini, which had been founded in 1670. Uh, they, so they were uh, truly among the pioneers. Um, and by six, 1677, there were only about 30 inhabitants. Uh, and I provided a link um, where you can see the names of those early, um, you know, early pioneers. It was only in 2002 when the Pantini merged with the city of Le Garda on um, June 1st that the city's area doubled in size and the population grew by 70 percent took them a long time now this particular um you know uh, clip that i have is adrien 
38. We have Marie, who's by then 26. This is the 1681 New France um, census. They have Pierre, leur fils, 12, and one gun, du bisacorne, two goats, and six arpents à valeur. Now we have Pierre, who was born 1669, when she would have been about 15 years of age. Um, and uh, Pierre would marry Jean-Francois Rancerie and have four children before his um, untimely death at 33. All four of his children made it. And uh, Marie-Anne uh, would marry Pierre Chiquan, uh, would have 10 children, seven of whom made it. Now I want you to look at this is all we have of Pierre, 1669, and then Marie-Anne, 15 years later. Very unusual. Don't know what was going on, but here's what might have happened. Something very unusual. Uh, on August 30th, 1695, Adrien and Marie signed a formal separation of property. So my guess is they did not get along, and uh, perhaps their, their other child, um, would have been, now there may have been, you know, miscarriages and deaths and, you know, there might have been that, but normally we see that. And so the fact that they only had those two children um, indicates, hints at something, either he wasn't in the house or she was left alone, all of that. But by 1695, they signed a formal separation of property, which is pretty amazing uh, given that time. They could not get divorced, of course. So Marie would pass away at the relatively young age of 58. She is as the wife of Adrian in her death record. Remember, they could not divorce, but they could be separated. Adrian himself would pass away at the age of, um, I believe it is 68, and he would die in 1722, uh, and he's buried at La Prairie. So obviously they really separated. <laughs> So um, just a remarkable kind of, you know, the fact that she went in alone, you know, and and wanted this. I, I am 100% convinced that it was due to her uh, wanting this and um, shudder to think of what precipitated this kind of separation and what she might have had to endure. So for further research, we have um, number one, La Société des Filles du Roi, that I would absolutely recommend. We have Gen Quebec, uh, which is the E-Society of Quebec. Absolutely recommend that. We have number three, which is Nos Origines, Nos Origines um, which is an amazing website. It's free as well. We have Genealogy Quebec, which is a paid site. By the way, number two is also a paid site. Um, really, really worthwhile if you're doing a lot of Quebec research. Number five is not a paid site, but I do contribute to it just because I just love that site. Um, and uh, number six is the Facebook, Big Jawa Descendants. Um, love that Facebook group. Uh, amazing group of people uh, who really um, support each other and they're kind of cousins, you know, it's kind of like finding your cousin. So love that, that Facebook group. And so ends you know, another story, one, episode number 102. You know, Marie's life was not an easy one to have been, you know, sent to New France at the age of 13. I don't really see any connection between her and her sister. There's no kind of proof that they, I'm sure they did, um, you know, just because, but you never know. Um, and the fact that she obviously did not have a happy marriage and only had two children um, is just, you know, I, I, I suspect uh, there's a lot more to this story and who knows if we'll ever find out. But certainly we thank her for her contribution. And even though with just the little amount that she had, we actually have, she actually had 33 descendants from 1729 in that big famous uh, study that they did. And guess what? Because of that, my viewer is one of them. So thank you so much to the viewer for helping me kind of weave this story. Love, I don't love telling stories of sad stories, but I do love seeing that maybe she took charge of her own destiny at some point. And in, seven, in 1695, she said, you know what? I just don't want to live with this guy anymore. That's what I think. So maybe it was the other way around. I don't know. I don't think so. 
But um, with that being said, I want to thank her for her contribution, bless her memory, and thank her so much for all that she did and endured so that we could be here. And with that, I end another episode. I will see you on episode number 103. And until then, au revoir.